Hi guys, how's it going eh? It's Todd the Cheap Drum Guy. Uh, I just want to put out a little quick video about your toms. Um, many of you, like I have, probably have watched hundreds of videos on YouTube drummers tuning their toms or trying to teach you how to tune their toms and whatnot. And there's a lot of information out there. I myself got all my information from uh, Rob Brown, also known as Rob Beatdown Brown. I mean, no frills approach, approach, gets right in there and gets it done, moves on to the next step. Um, one thing a lot of these drummers really haven't covered, because they're all using expensive drum sets and whatnot. These session studio kits, and these Star Classics and DW kits, you know, I don't have that. My kits, just the new heads on both my, for both my kits cost more than both my drum sets combined so they're cheap but they're still built like tanks they're solid and they do sound good all poplar but they're inexpensive this set cost the set my number one set cost me thirty dollars my number two set which I bought used through Guitar Center was a uh, hundred dollars but I still love both sets they both sound really good but they are inexpensive drum sets <clears throat> And a lot of inexpensive drum sets come with tom holders like this. It's a 7 8, 7 8 inch tube. And Pearl still uses these even on their better higher end kits. I don't understand why I think that they're, they're not as adjustable as the new uh, L-Rod with the adjustable ball. Those are just fantastic mounts. And the good thing about those L-Rods is they don't penetrate the shell at all. These do. Now I have uh, my 12 and 13 inch rack toms. My 12 is mounted in an excess or an excessive or extra snare stand. A little loss of words today. It's been a long day. Um, and my 13 is mounted off the tube, mounted to a cymbal stand on the side. But not without modification first. Now these tubes are hollow and the hollow, the hollow tube does carry sound. When I got these drum sets in, I sat over there on the couch and I took the top heads off. I removed Remo Emperors, although they are good drum heads, it's not the sound I wanted. So on this particular set, I put Evans Hydraulic heads, the red hydraulics, because I love the sound of them. And my number two kit, I put, just like this one, Evans EC2s. And I sat down there, put them on there, tightened, uh, tighten them down uh, right and I also tighten the resonant heads or I tune the resonant heads um, you don't just tune your batteries you have to tune the resonant heads as well and that was something I found on both these kits when I got them is that the top heads were somewhat tuned still but the resos were loose I mean they there was no way even with my good Remo Emperors on the batter that the drum was going to sound very good at all just because those resos were not tuned at all and that's a very important step I mean, it's a very important thing to get so the drum will be in tune with itself I mean both heads speak to each other that's the resonating that's where you get the tone of your uh, drums so don't be afraid to pick up a drum key and use it I've got about a dozen of them around here and it's still not enough because I'm constantly tinkering with the drums but anyways, getting back to the tom bar, these are hollow, and like this one, before I put it on, I did a little modification to it. Now, everybody has seen these swim noodles. I mean, my grandkids, I probably got a hundred of them in the garage. If you need some, hit me up. If I live in the Great Lakes State, of course I've got swim noodles around. And they're foam, easy to cut, and they also serve another purpose. What I did on this one, is I cut up a piece of swim noodle and I stuffed it in the, in the tubes like these. They're stuffed in there, they're shoved in there a little bit, but they're no longer hollow. They no longer carry sound that way. And that's important because as soon as you as soon as you tune your drum and you put it on the mount, or if, if you do it that way, um, you're going to notice a big change. The sound's going to be different. It's not going to sound the same. And because you're getting sympathetic resonating 
from your rack tom to your bass drum or your bass drum to your rack tom and this, it's it's going to change the sound of it so by filling ends with pieces of foam like you did it's going to alleviate most of that now another important thing is there's a lot of extra tube there when you mount these on your drum set like on your bass drum they go into these rather large holes and if you have a clear head such as I do you'll notice that it's going to stick through an inch two inches or three inches in some cases these are bigger toms well, my depth is it's a lot greater depth, like eight and nine inch, on my 12 and 13, and it'll actually uh, it'll go into it about an inch and a half, two inches. That is another big uh, thing that will change your tom sound, and because both drums cannot, uh, the vibrations can't pass freely through the drum to both heads, you know, to bounce back and forth. And with that tube sticking through, it interferes with that. So it's going to change the noise, uh, change the sound also. So what you do, since you can see it through your head, like on this one, is you back off or you pull your drum out of that tube just enough, just only so the mount, it's in the mount, and you can tighten it down. You don't want that tube going into your drum shell. It will seriously affect your sound. And with mine, well, I, I use the snare stand on this one, and I do use it on this one, but it's only, I think this one is only coming through about a quarter inch, and I do have to back it off a little bit more. But there's a lot of excess of tube there, and I will, in the future, cut some of it off, especially when you mount it on the bass drum. If I look into the batter head, which is clear, thankfully, I can see mine were dropping at an excess amount of tube of about three inches. And so what you can do is take off uh, take off your batter head and take a Sharpie and mark on there where the excessive amount of tubing is. And then pull it out, take it in your garage, use a hacksaw or a pipe cutter like I have, and cut off that excess of a bit of tube. But don't throw that away because down the road you're going to find a use for that. As I'm finding out with everything with my drums, as I modify everything, there's always a use for something else. There's whatever, whatever you remove or cut off, or yeah, you'd be surprised. There's so many things. David uh, Rauf, uh, you might know him by his YouTube videos, R. David R. I mean, he's the hack, the DIY guy, the quick fixes. The guy's a bloody genius. And you ought to pay more attention to him and listen to him. And if not just for the, the humoristic quotes he has on a lot of things, too. But. He says, don't throw any anything. And time and time again, when he's been doing a project, he's pulled open his drawers and found pieces he's cut off of something and reused them for something. And drum stuff can be quite expensive. I mean, as you all know, I mean, I found out, although my drums are cheap, hardware, cymbals, heads, sticks, it all adds up. And I've... I am retired military, but I do also have a full-time job, and I have a wife. So, if you got one of those things, they get expensive too, but they also nitpick and count pennies as you're trying to work on your kit. But anything you can do to save a buck, uh, you're better off. Don't get rid of your jumps because you think they sound crap. Like I said, get out your drum key. Work on your resonant head. Now, generally, like with my toms, I like the fat sound, okay? So they're too low on the, the batter heads. The resonant heads I have, not the way you should do it, but just the way I do it, mine is a little, a little pitch higher on the bottom. Some people, I mean, some drums are, are different. I mean, sometimes you got to play with them. I have two 16-inch rack toms, one for this kit, one for my other kit, that the tuning was kind of backwards on just to get the sound I wanted, which was odd. The floor toms are weird. They are a whole different animal. Um, Sweetwater Sound, or Sweetwater, you know, the largest music store in the United States. Fantastic place. I recommend them highly. Their in-house drummer, Nick DiVirgilio, fantastic drummer, fusion drummer, uh, been in a number of bands. 
but he's being widely known in, in, as Sweetwater's in-house drummer, and he's done numerous videos. One thing he likes to do with his floor toms is use cotton balls, and it helps because sometimes a floor tom, no matter the heads, no matter the tuning on it, sometimes it can still just be a little bit of a wild child. This 14, for example, for my other kit, this one has caused me a lot of grief, a lot of pain. However, I absolutely love this drum. But it took a little bit more to tame it. So what I did, since it is a, a floor tom, a much larger drum of course, I took the top head off and I dropped in some cotton balls. With the 14, I started with three, put them back on, tightened the tension rods back up, tuned the drum, and then played it again. It still was causing a little excess of noise. It was affecting the snares, although I do have pure sound equalizers on here, which is supposed to reduce that kind of stuff. But it still affected the snare, gave it a little bit of rattle. So I took, popped the head off again, and I dropped three more in there. Stopped it. Got a lot better, warmer tone out of it. And I figured, well, the 14 was the wild card out of the bunch, so my 16 should be fine. Well, it shouldn't take as much. I was wrong. Um, I did the same thing, though, just because, again, it was giving a little excess of noise. So I popped the head off, and I started off with five in this one and the other one. And right then and there, I think I hit the sweet spot. With both drums, I had a tinker with the resin I had. Uh, fat sound, low tuning on the head on this one with the with the hydraulics and just a little bit a tone or a tone above on the resonant head the tame it to give it a good sound and with the cotton balls in there it was perfect on my other tom floor tom it was, it was kind of a different thing i had to do a lot more tuning i don't it's the same drum manufacturer uh, the heads are a little different but i didn't think it would be that much of a hassle to trying to get that one tuned but it was a little bit of a work, and it's not so much the top head. Both top heads were tuned low. It was the resonant head. Um, the other one's a lot tighter than this one to be able to achieve the sound that I wanted. Again, I don't have electronic filtering like all the other guys. I have mechanical filtering because I have to tune it to my ear, not to the computer. Well, I, the computer doesn't tune it for me. I tune it to my own ear. So those of you who are down in your basement, because that's where the wife or the girlfriend keeps you, because she doesn't want to hear all the noise, that's what you got to do. And sometimes also, if all else fails, if you have a little bit of excess, your moon gel. Now moon gel is six bucks for a little container of it. Go to a grocery store, those little gumball machines along the side. Sometimes you'll find those ones with like the little sticky gummy hands or whatever like that. It's, the, it, it's initially the same same product, just a different shape. And unless you really want a rectangle or a square shape, you don't mind a little weird looking hand or a little goony face or whatever they are, you can buy those for a quarter. Uh, or you can go to the dollar store and get a whole sheet of them for like a dollar. So it's not just a catchy name, dollar store. It's actually true. But uh, those are just a couple little things uh, to help you with your toms. I'm not going to play them here because the camera sounds like crap with the recording. It's a new camera. I'm still trying to get the bugs out. And if you want to hear your fat tom sounds, you can 100 places on there uh, on YouTube to find them. But uh, cotton balls, foam in your tom arms and make sure your tom arms aren't going into your shells. And if you work on these couple little quick fixes and make sure you tune that resonant head you can be able to get a cheap set of drums sounding like uh, this is a $30 drum set out of Goodwill and I bet it sounds just as good if not better than a thousand dollar drum kit you can find me. I, I'd really I'd, I'd be willing to bet money on it because I love these things I, I love them they're mine and I'm going to keep them but anyways I hope this helps you uh, as I find little quick fixes and DIY stuff or modifications on my drums, uh, I'll be sure to try to 
do a video and post it because if you can gain, if one person out there, generally there's usually only two people who watch my videos, but if one of those two people who watch my videos actually gain something from it, it's worth the time and the effort. So that's a win-win situation for me. Plus it gives me something to do. Wife doesn't listen to me, so you can listen to me for a little bit. But anyways, again, I'm Todd. I'm the Cheap Drums Guy coming to you from beautiful northern Michigan. Have a good day, eh? See ya.